What is up guys, Chris here, Bear Market Mining. Thanks again for stopping by. So today we've got a little guide for you. So Octospace is now available on Windows. So previously, if you've seen my videos, it was on Linux systems, Hive OS, and the install was easy enough for some, but there were a ton of people who were wanting an easy way to do it. And now there is. So today we're gonna to take you through how to set that up on Windows in five to 10 minutes. It is easy as, let's get to it. All right, so let's show you exactly how to install this. Now this is through Windows WSL. I will leave a link down in the description for this page. It has all of the install guides and recommendations, but it is pretty much self-explanatory. It does almost do itself, give or take a few minor details. So as I said, link will be in the description, go there. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is download this Octospace node manager. So you'll click on that, the file will download and then we'll start this install. So we'll double click right here, click next, choose the folder or file that you want it to be saved in depending on where you've got the available space. We'll click next again and install. Now this will take, you know, 20 seconds. It sort of does nothing at the start and then rips through it. As we can see right there, install is done. We're gonna launch the Octospace node manager now. So that's already opened up. You'll have to accept the terms and conditions like anything, uh, accept that, go straight through. And it's gonna check that all of the system requirements are there. So the Windows supported version has to be Windows 11, system architecture, your virtualization support needs to be on, WSL needs to be installed, and you need sufficient disk space. So this is 200 gigabytes you'll need. Um, to run the dockers. So make sure you've got a minimum 200 gigabytes to start. Click continue. Then we're gonna click install node. Now you can choose and allocate how much of this disk size you wanna use. I'm just gonna use the standard. You can also select how much RAM you want to allocate. Now I would let it automatically do all this stuff itself. If you're trying to use the maximum capacity for your RAM, you're not gonna be able to run Windows in the background. So let it do its thing and click install. So as we can see, it's working its way through it now, downloading Ubuntu roots, root FS, sorry. It's gonna create the instance, it's gonna set up the Docker and install the OSN service. That's the Octospace node service. So we'll give that a few minutes, let it run through and then take the next step. So after a few minutes, that will have generated its node token. So we can scroll down here as we see, and this is our node token right here. Now, this will be very important to keep. So copy that, save it in a notepad or something like that. So you can't lose it or screenshot it. So we'll just click Control C, we'll click OK. I've noted the token. Next step, get started. So that is all now set up on the install end side of it. So we've got a few more steps before we can get there. Next step will be to make an Octospace account if you don't already have one. So I will leave a link down in the description so you can just click on that, make yourself an account. And then the next step will be to click up here in the top right on your user profile and click cube profile. So this is where we're gonna use that node token. So we'll come in here, you can see everything on the screen there for you. Yep. So let's open that up again. Which one is it? This one right here. There we go. Now we're going to need to set up this node properly. So we're going to click on here. We're going to click hosting. That'll load up. We're then going to click on nodes and we're going to need to add a new node. So we click add node. And this is where we're gonna paste in that token that we had before. This is my main PC. So I guess we'll call it uh, main PC. Pretty straightforward. Click create. So currently it says it's offline, but not for long. So after a couple of minutes, that will come online and we can see right now it says idle. Now it's going to want to run a few benchmarks and all that sort of stuff. We'll click on this and before it runs all those benchmarks, it does say the verification is failed right now. That just needs a restart. Let's go into the configuration itself. Now, 
I like to turn the VPN off and I have been given some advice that the VPN service on Windows is best to be left off for now. So leave that off and then come in here and set your price. So you can set whatever you want. This is a 3080 and a 9950X. Let's put it at 20 cents here. Click save settings and that will save itself successfully there. The next step coming up will be the benchmarking. So right now we can see we are back online and you can see it says it's busy. So right now it's running its benchmarks. It's checking CPU speeds, GPU clocks, uh, RAM, internet connection, all that sort of stuff. So this will take about five to 10 minutes. So let it run all these benchmarks before we move on because it's going to need all that information so you can display that on the marketplace and people can decide whether or not to rent your rig. All right, so the benchmarking is now done. We can tell this because it says we are idle. So that means benchmarking's done and we have not picked up a rental job yet. So to give you a bit more of a look in here, we can see under performance, it now has all of the information for this rig, the Blender score, the Blender CPU score, the network speed, all of that sort of stuff. And again, back into your configuration, you can change all of these prices to whatever you want. Now 20 cents is a bit high for a 3080, but we just threw that in for the numbers. So that's it up and running. And if we jump back over into the marketplace, we can see our 3080 is right here. So this is my rig right here. Now you'll notice it says it's got a zero down and zero up speed at the moment. If you have this issue, don't worry. I've had this on some other rigs before. You can reboot the rig and it will re-verify itself and it should fix that up. I've had that happen a couple of times, not to worry at all. So that is it guys, a really, really easy way to get this set up and running. It takes five to 10 minutes and Windows is that much more user friendly for newer sort of people getting into the space if you don't know Linux and HiveOS, really, really good. So let me know down in the comments if you've got rigs online already, what are you running, what are you charging, are you getting them rented out? If you liked the video guys, hit that like button for me and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.